Hey friends, Chris from Baby Beard Media here. Just wanted to say hi and let you know that what you're about to see is all five of us giving our kind of own reviews of the new show Disenchantment by Matt Groening. And this is the first time we've done anything where we haven't really talked to each other about what each of us thought. We all gave our thoughts independently of each other. And we, it's the first time we've kind of turned it into a video. Uh, it's not the first time we've kind of turned it into a video. It's the first time we've turned it into a video. We're kind of each talking for about five minutes. So you'll hear from Sean, Phil, Ellen, and Josh. Not in that order. And they'll give you their thoughts. Uh, some of them are in different parts of the world. Some of them haven't caught up with each other and chatted about the show. And all of them have watched it independently of each other anyway. So they're all kind of unique, different opinions. Uh, and I'll give my opinion at the end. If this is something you guys are kind of interested in, uh, let us know in the comments below. Or if you think we should stick to uh, podcasts and keep our faces behind uh, <laughs> a, uh, a podcast or a microphone or just some other media content so that we're not showing our faces, uh, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to everyone who made Disenchantment happen. I personally love it. Bit of a spoiler for what I'm going to be saying at the end of this video, but uh, I'll let the others talk about their, their opinions and feelings about the new show, Disenchantment, which just got released this week. Take it away, guys. Hey, Baby Beard fans. We're talking to you about Disenchantment, the new Matt Groening show. So, I watched the first two episodes and I'm really enjoying myself. First things out of the way, I want to talk about the art because I think it is really great and fun and I can tell from it that there is a lot of passion and more importantly fun in the creative team. They've got a blend of 2D animation and then 3D at certain points. It really works to make the kind of fairy tale feel feel better and more kind of it just makes it pop. They've got all these different worlds to explore since it's a fantasy setting and that's what fantasy is all about, kind of exploring places, quests and all that. So they're playing a lot with colours, they're playing a lot on uh, the kind of minute details which we all know from previous works, Simpsons and Futurama, but the art in this one is really standing out to me. Certain parts have a like cell shaded, if anyone's played the most recent King's Quest game, that's kind of the vibe and I love it. I love it. The voice acting is really great. We've got kind of, you know, old favourites, Billy West and John DiMaggio doing his John dimaggio it's just, it's just his voice. But his voice is great, so I cannot complain. And obviously he's playing a plethora of other random voices as well, where he gets to... Well, he doesn't get to, he, he does lots of, uh, you know, more detailed voices and more variations as opposed to just his rah, 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 angry voice. But I love his angry voice, so I cannot complain. There's a addition to the team in the form of Matt Berry, which I just think like, well, thank you. He works so well in this show. Um, and if you're thinking, hmm, this show really needs a uh, a more <laughs> vain, bigger douchebag character than Zap Brannigan. Who are we going to get to voice him? Matt Berry, of course. I love his work in IT Crowd and Mighty Boosh. And he's just, he brings so much fun to everything, particularly this role where, you know, we really want to hate this kind of foppish, fop, bleh, foppish prince that uh, he doesn't talk like that he talks like Matt Berry but he I love him and I hate the characters which is great he's doing everything brilliantly I guess I should kind of jump back to plotting and characters so 
besides Matt Berry, we have Abby uh, Jacobson as Princess Bean, and I really like that it's a female-led show. Um, I think Simpsons and Futurama really great, but it's always kind of been male-led, and the female characters kind of become subplots or you know they get their day out or their own episode yay uh, but it's just a really nice change of pace to have one uh, female led I really like the character being um, she's kind of like Merida from Brave but just a bit more <laughs> a bit more like your average human kind of going about their life and a not great way and just having fun trying to figure themselves out drinking too much stabbing people accidentally killing their husbands we've all been there um but she she's really good and the voice actor kind of gives it this down to earth quality we've also got elf elfo um played by nat Faxa, sorry, Faxon, I don't, uh, I don't know, don't know much of his other work, but he does a good job at this kind of like, he, this naive character who wants to have a bit more of a kind of human experience, uh, and I love Lucy, who's played by Eric Andre, this demon who is works really well because it, there's no bad guys in this show apart from just kind of boredom with complacency so society is not the bad guy but it's these things that these characters are rebelling against so the demon <laughs> partnering up with Princess Bean really works well because sometimes you need to fuck shit up and what better way to do it than with an actual demon telling you all the things that your anti-conscience would do. Um, yeah, the humour can be a bit hit or miss. I think that's coming to do with the pacing. It's really taking its time setting up a new world, a new show, new elements, new stakes. Um, and quite a lot of that ac the actual action scenes, um, they're really easy to follow which means they're a bit more slow paced. Uh, I mean, I'm really more invested in this show actually just for the change of pace. I love all the art and scenery and I'm actually getting a bit attached to the characters, which is really good because I think that's what a good Matt Groening show should do. So yes, that's me. I'm very happy to keep watching and uh, share my opinions with you later. Hi folks, Phil here. I'm here to share with you my thoughts on Disenchantment, or at least the first episode, which is the only one I have watched so far. So, uh, I'll start with the good. Uh, I think that uh, Disenchantment has some good characters to work with. So we have this main trio. We have Bean, the Reluctant Princess. Uh, we have Lucy, this demon, uh, linking to a deeper plotline. And then we have Elfo, who is a magical elf, sick of the uh, wonderful, overly saccharine happy world that he lives in. So starting with Bean, uh, this character is maybe a little cliched, um, but it, she's our access into the show. So that's okay. Uh, I think particularly when we're introducing the characters, we need something to hook onto, we need something we understand pretty quickly and this reluctant princess archetype is a, a pretty good foil for us. Um, she's um, pretty likeable, sort of self-starting character who um, is is uh, willing to, to chase what she wants uh, and, and that means I think uh, we're going to get behind her and we're going to enjoy just kind of seeing uh, where her journey goes. Uh, then Lucy is uh, a nice way of putting the kind of straight man into this um, comedy trio. Um, they're sardonic, they've got this cynical viewpoint, um, and it gives the animators and the writers a lot of creat creative space about where they're going to take this character in this show, because 
um, uh, Lucy as a demon. We don't know the rules yet. Um, and they're kind of, they've got this uh, nice kind of plastic way to the way they move. So there's uh, really room to grow with that character. Uh, then there's Elfo. Elfo I'm not as big a fan of. Um, as my partner pointed out, he has a really annoying voice. Uh, and one of the main characters having a grating voice is, is kind of a, a bit of a, a difficult roadblock for the show. Uh, also, I feel like a lot of his sections in, in this first episode fell a little bit flat. Uh, they seemed a little bit pointless and, and didn't really carry the story forward. Um, his character's a little one-dimensional as well, and his uh, instant love for Bean kind of comes out of nowhere. So um, I kind of see where he works as part of the trio of characters, um, being a... Uh, the ingenue uh, kind of character so uh, I can see what his function is whether it's going to be well realized and and work out not sure yet so I'm a bit on the fence about Elfo another good aspect of the show is the world I think it's really well realized world it's gorgeous the colors are kind of muted with some kind of bright spots to them and um, there's definite style. Obviously, it's a, a Matt Groening cartoon, so it has that to it. But there's a definite style to it that distinguishes it from, say, The Simpsons or the Futurama. And I really like looking at the world, like the city in particular that they start out in. It looks really gorgeous. Uh, and there's some nice detail in the, in the character designs and their costumes. I think it's really good. There are also some really fun gags. It's a comedy show. It needs to have good gags. So uh, I, I like the uh, two mysterious strangers governing... Uh, Lucy's activities uh, when they say they're going to need chairs dark chairs that really cracks me up so I really like that one um, uh, there's some nice kind of insightful kind of cutting gags uh, particularly around this uh, this little one liner about uh, this religion still in its early stages uh, I think that works well I'd really like to see more of that. There's a good bit of slapstick in there as well, so there's kind of a mix of humour. I'd like to see a little more zaniness than push the boundaries a little bit. A little bit more of the Futurama style humour I think is lacking here and there. Um, uh, so the gangs are about 50-50 for me. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't completely unfunny, but I did find myself, and I found myself chuckling pretty often throughout, so uh, I, I think, you know, I'll maybe put some of the missed opportunities down to teething problems, um, uh, and hopefully the writers will find their voice uh, as the show goes on, and, and there'll be more hits than misses, so I'm willing to, to give it a bit more of a benefit of the doubt when it comes to that. The negatives, the drawbacks, there's um, a little bit of kind of odd stiltedness to some of the scenes that are meant to be actiony or exciting. Uh, I, I couldn't really place this. I think maybe it's partially the music. Um, maybe it's the flatness of the presentation. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but particularly when um, there are chase scenes, and there are about three chase scenes in this episode, uh, I, I just didn't. I, I didn't feel kind of energy or excitement for it, and that was a little worrying because they used quite a lot of time on those uh, kind of exciting moments, and they really didn't land for me. I was a little bit worried. My sense of peril really wasn't there. There's also uh, another negative I found was the episode cuts around a lot. Now, this is because it's an episode that's all about exposition and getting all the characters together. It, it felt a bit schizophrenic maybe about how it snapped around between scenes. Um, and particularly as it kind of snapped back to Elfo and we have the scene with the farmers and the gnome versus kind of troll war. They seemed a little bit pointless and then really contribute to the episode that much um, and so I think we could have done without them uh, I didn't think they even were advancing Elfo's character that much and as a summary I feel like uh, it's an okay start it didn't blow me away um, but I chuckled a few times uh, and I can see the potential in the characters and the setting uh, I'm kind of on the fence so definitely room to grow um, and if they can introduce a bit more insightful parody uh, snap up, uh, sharpen up the gags and the pacing a little bit of the show uh, and maybe as the show goes on give us a bit more of a deeper insight into these characters it could be as good as Futurama but it's a bit too early to say at this stage. That's my initial impression of Disenchantment uh, let us know if you agree with what we've said or if you think it's a load of hogwash 
Uh, and um, we'll see you around. Bye. Hello there, guys and girls. It's Josh from Baby Beard Media. Um, so I just had the pleasure of watching the first two episodes of Disenchantment. Um, I should let you know that I have not seen anything about this show beforehand. I knew that it was coming out, and uh, I saw a frame of the animation. So I saw the uh, Princess Bean, I saw Lucy, and I saw Elvo. And I was going in this completely blind. I will let you know that I was incredibly hesitant going towards this. Uh, if you told me of, of the Matt Groening of the uh, 2000, early 2000s, of the Futurama height and the Simpsons when it was starting to taper off, I'd be very excited. And knowing the current trend of a lot of animated shows, I decided to go in without knowing too much. The beginning of... First of all, see the first two episodes. You gotta watch the first two episodes because the first episode kind of just ends with a little bit of a cliffhanger and it needs to go into the second episode. But the moment the episode starts, the first one, the intro is great. That song, like, I was immediately like, okay, I'm on board. This is great. The animation looks great. The first bits of animation you see as well. Uh, the entire world looks beautiful. Like, hands down gorgeous. And a lot of the character design, eh, it's a bit hit and miss. A lot, sometimes the characters will sit quite perfectly in that, but a lot of the times the animation, it looks like they're placed on top. So it left me a little bit uh, sometimes out of the mood when uh, I saw that it just looked like they were put over the top because it is very storybook and very beautiful. The characters. So Bean, I didn't like at the beginning. Like, Bean's introduction, I, like, it's understandable. Uh, it's the old trope of uh, forced marriage, uh, finding your way in the world, fighting against it, which was fine. Uh, but I didn't like Bean. And I didn't like Bean up until the first campfire scene, so I will get to that as well. But Bean is... nice enough? Uh, I mean, like, I don't think... And this is a criticism that I have for most of it. None of the characters really have enough time dedicated to them. It's very, uh, this first episode especially, the second episode has a touch of it as well, really weird pacing. The first episode, lightning cuts between the idea of the marriage, the idea of Bean, and the idea of Elfo, and uh, Lucy being thrown into the mix with uh, some mysterious shady organization watching in the fire of uh, Lucy's actions. And then the second episode, it was shorter, and it felt like it dragged, like it dragged for a lot of it, and there was an A-plot and a B plot, which was technically an A plot and an A plot, which I think only served for the purpose of um, a significant thing. Uh, I'm not sure if this is spoilers, uh, so I won't say, but uh, just the ending of the second episode, it just it merely was setting up for that. Uh, but no, Bean is fine. The more that Bean goes on, the better it is. And I think that that's a strength of the episode, but if you're put off by Bean immediately, you got to stick with it. Elfo, on the other hand, I don't I like I really liked him in the elf village and then after that I I don't I, it's there's nothing new and exciting of seeing an elf a fish out of water or elf out of water in this case kind of plot and he's me it, it feels like he's merely there to counteract Lucy which I think Lucy is great I think Lucy is a very strong part of the episode I think he's acted very well and I just like the idea of uh taking uh, the old trope of the the bad guy, the uh, the the villain, the enemy, and uh, or in this case a demon, and making him quite literally the shoulder devil of Bean. And when Bean and uh, Lucy interact, I love it. I genuinely love it. And when Elfo's there, sometimes I'm fine with Elfo, and sometimes Elfo is merely there to set up either a bad joke or just meant to be really clingy like elfo is like the parts of fry from futurama that i didn't like the parts which was very much like hey leela i'm here look at me and oh god sorry everyone who's watching that and chris for editing if that threw around too much but look it's nothing new it's nothing really particularly exciting it's fine it's entertaining it's uh, it feels like an Adventure Time kind of style, but without the charm or pacing, which is strange because this is budgeted as an adult 
only animated show. But it just feels like... I don't know. Something's missing. Something's missing. I'm going to watch the rest of the series. But from the first two episodes alone, I'd, I'd give it a solid... You should watch this. It's alright. It's not trash. It's not horrible. But it's not... It's not something shining or... That's got me excited. I'm going to watch it, but I... I'm worried. But I think you should check it out and cast your own mind. Twenty eighteen and we have a brand new series from Matt Groening. Disenchantment we're about seventy two hours removed from the actual series dropping on Netflix. Got a lot of familiar faces from Futurama, which this boy really, really is happy with. Wes Archer, David X. Cohen, obviously, Matt Groening, uh Patrick M. Verone, Eric Kaplan. Maybe? I don't think Eric Kaplan, actually. Point is, lots of Futurama alumni on board, all hands on deck for this series, which is thumbs up for me. Uh, look, very quickly, it's interesting where Disenchantment falls kind of into the canon that is Matt Groening animation, because Simpsons came out in the 80s, Futurama in the 90s, 20 years later, Disenchantment comes out, and you've got that uh, present, past, future sensibility. Uh... Also, kind of the thing to um, keep in mind is that Disenchantment has that post-Family Guy American Dad thing to deal with, and and which is interesting because I've been quite spoiled for choice lately in terms of animation shows like Final Space and Archer, Bob's Burgers, Break the Norm, and don't really fall into that Family Guy uh, humor. Trap Disenchantment does have a little bit of that at times, um, which you can't really escape, and it's always going to be that way because Matt Groening likes to follow in the footsteps of Family Guy a, a, a bit, and that kind of not not gross out humor, just more kind of awkward, edgy humor. Um, the edginess I do enjoy. This is technically an adult animation, uh, Disenchantment being, and it also takes its cues from Game of Thrones, as well as their older series like The Simpsons and Futurama. I'm getting ahead of myself, just very quickly. So Disenchantment follows the adventures of Bean, uh, Bean the princess of pr King Zog, Zog, I do forget his name. Uh, she's a princess who's not happy with her lot in life, doesn't want to be married off to um, the prince of a neighbouring nation doesn't really care for that. She wants to be in control of her own destiny. Meanwhile, two characters are introduced. We have Lucy, the personal demon who is there to be with Bean forever and ever. And Elfo from the neighbouring elf nation who wants to be in a place where everyone is more miserable. So you see where the dichotomy is there. These three find themselves uh, joined together through happenstance, and that's where the adventures occur. A few things off the bat. Um, so, Elfo, I shouldn't hate him as much as I do, but he's really annoying. And there is a point in episode two or three where uh, Lucy, um, the personal demon, is no longer in the picture for a while, at least, and Elfo kind of laments this fact and says, you know, I'm, I'm boring, I'm bland, and I can't handle the screen myself, and help me, and I'm kind of there going, me too. I don't know why I don't like him. He's just annoying, and I'm kind of a little bit uncomfortable with the whole really wants to be with Bean sort of thing, but that's fine. Lucy is uh, the revelation of the series for me. I love the interplay between the demon and Bean. So Bean and demon, more of that, please. Love it. Um, I do love a lot of the ties uh, to, you know, commenting on um, that sort of era, that past era, and how awful it was, um, and kind of interplaying that together with a lot of mo modern sensibilities. The uh, donkeys making the police siren noise, more of that stuff. Love it all. Overall, I want the series to do more of what it did in episode three. So I watched the first three episodes just to be clear on that. Um, it's starting to go more into that monster of the week mentality where it doesn't have to be this through line narrative with an overarching narrative and little uh, kind of 
mini uh, episode arcs as well. It, it can just be their adventures, one episode at a time, maintain the status quo and go on from there. Futurama did it, Simpson has been doing it for 30 years, it's kind of tried and true and it works, and a lot of modern series don't seem to like doing that anymore. Take your cues from Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek was all about Monster of the Week and then Discovery came along and they had to make it about the Ark and, you know, there's a lot of other problems with that series and so you get my point. Uh, overall, once episode 3 hit, I was much more on board with Disenchantment. I like the uh, the tone that it's going with and the direction I can see it uh, heading into. few quick notes. I love the green fire demon people. Don't know who they are yet, but I'm digging it. Dark chairs and a lot of other great little moments from then. Absolutely on board. I've already said Lucy I really enjoy. I want to see more of kind of Lucy. Um, been kind of discovering her place and the the the, the storylines being uh, derived on that kind of less on the whole will she get married thing i wasn't really digging it um so uh more on that also special shout out to a particular death that is not quite dead but he is and it's fucking hilarious Love it. So, I will be watching more of it. I am on board, and as long as they kind of stick to that path, I'm, I'm pretty well happy with it. Uh, also, quick notes, and there seems to be a lot of also's and also's and also's. Animation feels very kind of early Simpsons. And maybe that's more so the, the, the maid. When the maid first came in, I thought that looks very kind of early Simpsons. I don't know why, just that creepy kind of... Mm, just a picture of that. Face. I don't know why my my head goes, my thoughts go there, but it did. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of my main thoughts. You know, I'm I'm giving it the benefit of a doubt. It's kind of hard to get um, a, a reading on the series three episodes in because I'm also the kind of person that is happy to say I'm one of those guys that says you know watch past season one and season two's where it really kicks off because that, by the way. Yep, I'm, I'm going to show up here, because you don't need to watch Season 1 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., head on to Season 2 and beyond, because that's where it gets good. So I'm those guys, same with The Office, get on The Office. So, you know, give it a chance. I don't want to feel cynical about Disenchantment, so I'm kind of giving it a more positive review at this point, because I think it has the ability to go really, really well, and you know what? That's just me, so keep doing you guys, and don't steer me wrong, please. Don't be family guy, just you do you. Just don't be too meta, don't be too cynical, and don't fall into the traps that a lot of other animations do. Alright, so that's me. I've been Sean, and see you guys later. I might go watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Don't hate me. Bye. So there you have it. Four out of the five Baby Beard crew talking about their feelings uh, regarding disenchantment. Now it's my turn. I put all this together and so I've seen all of their footage so I won't repeat a couple of the themes that they've said. I agree. I think Lucy's great. Uh, Elfo's a little bit annoying and Bean is a really interesting character with great potential that we kind of haven't seen the big hook for yet in in my opinion just thoughts now for me i love the show i can't wait for more in fact after i finish editing this i'm going to keep watching it i'm up to episode three by the way just in case any of any of you are wondering how far i'm into it one of the things that i think the others haven't really chatted about and something that i was thinking about when the show was coming up was that netflix's unique and different to say the Simpsons uh, platform or Futurama's platform or any of the Fox cartoons, Family Guy, American Dad, so on and so forth, even Adult Swim. It's different because those are released weekly, they're episodic. Netflix releases all of the episodes all at once and I think Disenchantment is better compared to the cartoons on Netflix as a result. So F is for family, Bojack Horseman, 
uh, are some that spring to mind immediately. Does it compare in terms of quality to those? As of yet, I think it's visually stunning and I think it blows a couple of the others out of the water in terms of that. In terms of writing, I think it's still trying to find its pace and its tone. I think that's been a common theme throughout everyone's kind of review, but I agree with that. There are some great moments and there's different sorts of funny. I really want them to stick with one sort of funny and figure, figure what the big hook is, what the big drive is. For me, it's the Lucy stuff. Um, I really like Eric and I think he's a wonderful voice actor and I hope he does more of it and that I get to see it. Well, that's all from me. Those are just some quick thoughts that I've been milling about in my head as uh, I've been watching the show. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Subscribe to us, like us, find us on iTunes and Spreaker, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We're all over the place. You can email us at baby, uh, babybeardmedia at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, just uh, let us know what your thoughts are. Did you like the show? Do you Have you finished it already? Have you marathoned it already? Um, big ups to Briggs, who's one of the writers for the show, an Australian uh, hip-hop artist, part of AB Original and his own solo MC work. Uh, I follow him on Twitter and I think he's amazing. Um, so big ups to him for being one of the writers on the show. Uh, what an incredible dude. Yeah. That's all from me. Uh, check us out. Let us know. If you want more of this, less of this, this is the first one that we've done. So, uh, yeah. Hope you like it. If you don't, let us know. If you do, let us know. Catch you guys and stay tuned for the next podcast episode that's coming up right around the corner. Peace.